In this episode, we ask the question, how can we know about the reproductive cycle of an animal by its poop? Hey, Josh Bernstein here. I'm outside of Front Royal, Virginia, on my way to SCBI, the Smithsonian Conservation Biology Institute. Located outside of Washington, D.C., SCBI sits on a 3,200-acre facility where scientists and caretakers have breeding populations of endangered species. SCBI also acts as a laboratory and support center for the National Zoo. Previously, I helped panda and lion caretakers at the National Zoo collect poop. I'm here today to learn how scientists at SCBI can help caretakers learn about the reproductive status of their animals using the frozen samples we collected. I've arranged to meet Sarah Putman, a laboratory technician who conducts analysis of animal poop, blood, urine, and saliva looking for chemical cues about reproduction and animal health. Her expertise has earned her the nickname, the Poop Sleuth. Sarah is going to show me the steps she uses to analyze the hormones in poop. All right, what can I do? Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get lion and giant panda fecal samples ready for the lyophilizer. The lyophilizer? Exactly. Okay. A lyophilizer is a freeze dryer. For it to work, we must first open and thaw the poop sample sent from the zoo so that all the moisture can escape the bags. And at this point, I should point out I can uh, smell that. Mm-hmm. It's pretty rough. Yes. What's the advantage of removing the moisture? Sarah explains that she has to remove the water from the poop because she wants only the organic material and chemicals. The dryer works by turning the solid water in the frozen poop into a gas, evaporating it. Samples go in the dryer for three to five days. I have to say, right now, the smell is not as it's bad not at all. as it was when it they were wet. It will be in a minute. Oh, well, oh, we're not out of the woods yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to do the next part, which is crushing them. Crush them. After we reseal the samples, we put on protective masks. We need to pound the poop to make small, standardized samples for analysis. Okay. So you're going to take a sample mm -hmm. and your mallet, mm -hmm. and you're going to crush it. Once we've crushed the freeze-dried poop, we sift the samples through a strainer to remove any large pieces of organic matter, like bamboo or bone. We then place the strained poop dust into labeled test tubes. Working with the lion samples, I spot something familiar from the feeding at the zoo, purple glitter, which means this is Shira's poop. Oh, purple glitter. I got glitter. There's glitter here. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. That's pretty smelly. <coughs> Male and female animals produce hormones, which come out in their poop. Males make mostly testosterone, females mostly estrogen. The amount of hormones varies, or cycles. Hormone levels go up if animals are ready to have young. We record the weight of the samples and ensure that they're all the same. So now we've weighed out all of our fecal samples, mm -hmm. and we need to add an alcohol and water solution to all of the samples. And then we're going to vortex them. Cool. And that will cause the hormones to go from the fecal sample into the alcohol solution. Okay. So this is the first part of the phase when hormones are being isolated. Correct. Let's do it. Vortexing, or spinning the samples, literally pulls the hormones out of the poop dust and into the alcohol solution. Can you do two ones? Yeah. Can you do three ones? Mm-hmm. Awesome. So we might be, we might be pushing the capacity of the yeah. Wow, look at that. Triple vortex. So all the hormones are getting pulled into the ethanol. Right. Love it. Something about creating poop, poop nados. The samples are moved to a centrifuge where they're spun at high speeds. This separates the hormones into the alcohol away from the poop. The alcohol is then pipetted off the top of the solids and moved to a drying hood to evaporate, leaving behind the hormones. Sarah adds another liquid to the test tubes to concentrate the hormones. They are again vortexed and dried, then a liquid buffer is added for a hormone assay. Sarah then places the panda and lion hormones into these sterile glass trays to run assays. What is an assay? We are running enzyme immunoassays, and those are basically tests. Okay, so assay, fancy word for test. Pretty much. Scientific term. Yes. And right now, we're testing for estrogen specifically. We're looking at a female lion and the female panda at okay. the zoo. What Sarah shows us is that the hormones that are added turn the samples blue. 
The more hormones, the more blue the sample turns. She uses another chemical to stop the reaction, which turns the wells yellow. Whoa! The samples are put into a spectrophotometer, which quantifies the amount of hormones by shining light through each well and measuring the intensity of the color. The more light that passes through, the less hormones. Right there, you can see all of the numbers. That's all of the readings that it did for us. All the estrogens. All of the estrogens from this assay. And wow. then... This was the lion or the panda? This is the lion. Okay. Sarah says that the estrogen levels are normal for a lion that is not pregnant. An increase in hormones is also useful for predicting if it is cycling and ready to have young. In all species, the first thing that we need to do is learn about their basic reproductive biology. So we need to know how often lions cycle versus how often pandas cycle, and then we can go from there into how to help them breed and um, be more successful in breeding in captivity. Sarah is an important part of the zoo's science team that helps with successful animal births, such as the giant panda, Bao Bao. As I understand it, Sarah, mm -hmm. Bao Bao is here because of you. Partially because of me. Because you were able to determine mm -hmm. when the pandas should mate. Right. right. So giant pandas only can reproduce one day a year. So there's a small window of 24 to 72 hours mm -hmm. where a giant panda female can get pregnant. In 2013, male panda Tian Tian didn't get the zoo's female, Mei Xiang, pregnant on the day she was cycling, or ready. So Sarah and the science team had to step in. By collecting Mei Xiang's poop, analyzing its hormones, and determining the right moment for insemination, they knew precisely when to act. The result of this incredible science was a bouncing baby panda named Bao Bao. So the collection of poop, which to some would sound silly, if not disgusting, right? actually has a very powerful and practical benefit. Mm -hmm. We can look at the hormones in those fecal samples to see how the animal's hormones are changing over time. So then we can use that to help us diagnose what's going on with the animal. So to answer our original question, how can we know about the reproductive cycle of an animal by its poop? Today we've learned that the reproductive cycles can be tracked using hormones found in poop. By working in teams, scientists can predict when a female animal is cycling, measure her estrogen levels, and plan a time for breeding. This information is critical for increasing the populations of endangered and threatened animals and to maintain biodiversity on our planet.